Hey listener, it's Brooke Daniels, Morgan Curtis, Mackenzie Roy, and Morgan Franklin. Prepare to immerse yourself into the fantastic, enticing history of the Zhou Dynasty as we travel back in time to 1045 BCE to 221 BCE. We begin our very exciting journey, planned just for you. First, the geographical location and significance will be explained along with the most important political aspects. Next, you will dig deep into the culture and religions of the wonderful people living in China during the Zhou Dynasty. Lastly, we will inform you of the economic as well as intellectual aspects of this dynasty. Hope you enjoy this delightful overview of the Zhou Dynasty. To start off, where was the Zhou Dynasty? Well, the Zhou Dynasty was developed around the Wei River, the Wangqi River, and the Yangtze River. These rivers provided fertile soil that contained nutrients that made farming easy in the region. It was also located in the North China Plain. The monsoons brought winds and rain to the region, which caused annual flooding that provided nutrients to the soil. Wheat and rice were the crops that were cultivated in the region. Wheat was grown in the north while the rice was grown in the south. In 1045 BC, the Zhou Dynasty was founded. The two founders of the Zhou Dynasty are Wen and his son Wu. Wen was a vassal ruler who was held prisoner by a Shang overlord and initiated a rebellion as a result of this disaffection. Wu plays a more important role in the history of the Zhou because in addition to leading a successful attack on the Shang capital, he was also enthroned as the first ruler of the Zhou dynasty. When Wu passed after two years of ruling in the mid-11th century, Dan, or the Duke of Zhou, ascended to the throne because Wu's son, Chang, was too young to ascend to the throne. The Duke of Zhou was one of Chang's uncles who assumed the position. He is famous in Chinese history mainly because he was praised by the philosopher Confucius, who claimed he was the ideal administrator because he selflessly returned to his lower position of power once Chang was old enough to ascend to the throne. In 976 BC, Zhao troops attacked the wrong people and expanded the Zhao territory slightly. The Zhao were forced to move the capital to Luang, a base farther east. This change marks the start of the Eastern Zhao period, 771 BCE to 221 BCE, a long era where Zhao monarchs were figureheads and leaders of virtually independent Chinese states scattered across northern and central China actually held the power. This brings us into the Eastern Zhao period in which Zhao kings were pawns, given little support or loyalty from largely independent states nearby. Warfare was common during these times and tension increased as individual states became larger and more powerful. The growing tension was a cause of the Warring States period from 481 to 221 BC, and during this time, larger states absorbed smaller ones through conflict. As rivalries grew, many states put up walls to protect their borders and increased the size and strength of their armies. Eventually, one state, the Qin, rose above the rest and brought China into the Qin Dynasty. Most of the Zhou population was poor farmers that lived on the countryside. The clothing was made out of rough fabric for the lower class, while some upper class wore silk clothing. The homes were made of mud and straw. The upper class homes contained some artwork. The food consisted of mostly rice and vegetables cultivated by the local farmers. The families had strong ties and lived together for many generations. Elders were much more respected in the family due to their age and experience. Many Chinese philosophies and religions at the time, such as Confucianism, stressed the families were a crucial unit to achieve a balance in life, and some even led families to worship their ancestors who had passed away. To justify his rule, Wu used the mandate of heaven, which many Chinese rulers used throughout their country's history. Wu declared that heaven, or Tian, the highest Zhou dynasty, had granted him the authority to rule as long as he sought after the welfare of his subjects. The kingdom's prosperity and stability would prove that Wu, the son of heaven, had the right to rule China as a monarch. Mandate of heaven was the Chinese ideology developed by the Zhou. It was the privilege of the chief deity of heaven to grant power to the ruler of China and to take away that power if the ruler failed to conduct himself justly and in the best interests of his subjects. Kang Zi, or Confucius, was a Chinese philosopher who founded Confucianism. He existed between 551 and 479 BC. Kang Zi's ideas drew upon traditional Chinese thought, but gave them a new form and meaning. After withdrawing from public life, Kang Zi educated students on his ideas on morality, conduct, and government. 
His sayings were handed down orally for generations before compiled in the Analects, the Book of Confucianism. The Analects established a code of conduct for government officials. One of the main concepts of, of Confucianism is the importance of family. Confucianism would not be considered a religion because though Kongzi preached about respecting gods and ancestors, he also said that what lies in the supernatural world is not able to be determined. Shunzu is recognized for stating the opposite of Meng Zi in Zhou history. Shunzu, in the 5th century BC, claimed that humans had to be compelled to make wise decisions. His ideas were very important because they led to the development of another school of thought, legalism, after Shang Yang developed legalism based off of Shunzu's teachings. Legalism was used to justify the harsh control of the ruler over the rest of the population in order to gain control of the people. Shang Yang declared people were inherently selfish and needed a strong leader to control them as a result. Lao Zi created the idea of Taoism during the Warring States period. Lao Zi is credited with the text of Taoism, the classic of the way of virtue. This book says that what we consider a reality is actually just an obstacle in understanding a higher reality. Tao means path of nature. Yin and yang are complementary factors that help to maintain the equilibrium of the world. Yang is the masculine, light, and active qualities, while yin is the feminine, dark, and passive qualities in nature. Taoism was later suppressed during the first decades of People's Republic of China. Therefore, it is mainly practiced today in Taiwan, and few Chinese people still believe in this philosophy. Between 372 and 289 BC, Confucianism spread gradually after Kongzi's death, and eventually became very popular in China. The spread of Confucianism was largely due to Meng Zi, a disciple of Kong Zi. Meng Zi believed that if people were put down the right path by a virtuous leader, since they are inherently good at heart, people would do the right thing. Meng Zi, or Mencius, is one of the most famous Confucius philosophers, second only to Confucius himself, because of the large impact he made in spreading Confucianism throughout history. The early Chinese peasants had very poor conditions and made up the majority of the population. The upper class minority controlled the land in a feudal system and also held power over the lower class. The kings were at the top of the class structure, followed by nobles, then warriors, and lastly, the peasants. We also have many roots in the Zhou dynasty that females did not, which was common in ancient dynasties. The dynasty was very patriarchal. The male babies were spoiled from birth while female children were put on the floor in order to show her future of household labor and subservience. Fathers had absolute control over the women and children. They arranged marriages for their kin and could sell their family members to help others. Only males participated in important religious rituals. The man whose wife died could remarry in order to continue the line of their hair, while women were discouraged to remarry on the other hand. Yin and Yang were represented in the dynasty by the roles of men and women. Men and women were to balance one another based on their strengths and weaknesses. Throughout the next three centuries, the monarch's power began to disintegrate. This was mainly due to the division of power occurring because of the feudal system. The feudal system split up the ownership of land more evenly, taking away from the central power of the monarch. Wu used the feudal system similar to the system used in medieval Europe, in which he gave land to his relatives and allies, in which they could administer and gain profits. The feudal system led to the fragmentation of the Zhao, causing internal rivalry along with an erosion of power from the central government. Also, feudalism widened the gap between the rich and the poor because it made the poor more economically dependent on the rich. The Zhao dynasty helped stabilize the Chinese economy by implementing a standardized currency called cowrie shells. The British Museum states that cowrie shells began to be used as currency in the Shang dynasty and were used from the 16th to the 18th century BCE. The Zhao had a mercantile economy that went hand in hand with their agricultural production, producing ceramic, jade, and bronze items. Advances of the Zhou dynasty impacted warfare the most. They learned from the nomadic people of the steppes to ride on horseback, which aided them in attacking and defending throughout battles, in addition to helping with long-distance trade. 770 to 221 BC is the 100 schools period. During this period of the Zhou dynasty, schools that implemented Confucianism, Taoism, and legalism were used to educate the youth. They appeased the leaders and addressed political issues. When rice and other grains were introduced in this period, it sparked population growth throughout the country. Arguably, the most major advances in the Zhou dynasty was with iron. 600 BCE is the starting date of the use of iron as the primary metal for tools and weapons. 
Iron replaced bronze after nomadic people of the Northwest spread their knowledge of iron making. New iron technology was especially useful in the feudalistic society. More iron availability allowed for improved tools like the iron-tipped ox plow, increasing agricultural production and surplus of food. In turn, the surplus of agricultural goods allowed more Chinese citizens to become merchants and traders. In addition to iron, these merchants traded raw materials like rice, wheat, and jade. Wow, what a great lesson that was! Thank you for joining us in our educational discussion of the Zhou Dynasty. We hope you enjoyed this presentation and are more informed about Chinese history than you were before. Bye! Or as they said in the Zhou Dynasty, Zai Tian!